Have you ever wondered how cool it really is to add color-changing RGB lights to your PS4 controllers and make them look sweet? Well, in this video, we're gonna be doing exactly that. Hey again everyone, this is Fuad and welcome back to my channel. In this video, as you can already tell, I'm gonna take my PS4 controller and add some RGB lights to it. Special thanks to Extreme Rate for sending this kit to me and all they asked for is to do an honest review of how this really is. So by the end of this video, we will be concluding if you should actually buy this product or should you not. ExtremeRate.com has plenty of gaming accessories for PlayStation, Xbox, Nintendo Switch or you name it. If you're looking for quick mods or repair parts for your broken controllers, ExtremeRate.com has got you covered. You can use this code on your screen to get a 10% off your final purchase at ExtremeRate.com on absolutely any product. With that aside, let's get down to business. So the box itself is pretty nice and straightforward, pretty small. The first thing you're gonna find is your RGB light. And underneath that, you're gonna get all the buttons that we'll be replacing in this project. I love how this mini box has all the required tools, so you don't need anything extra, it's all in one. First of all, your PS4 needs to be fully functional. That means all the buttons, the analogs, the sticks, they need to be working. Also, your PS4 needs to be the latest model. So our first step is to take the supplied screwdriver and take off the four screws underneath the PS4. With a slightly firm pressure, you can dispatch the top piece from the bottom. You might find this provided orange plastic piece to be quite useful in this step. Pull this long wire to completely separate the two pieces. Let's work on this section now. We're gonna take off the battery wire from the motherboard and take off the battery from the controller. Next, we're gonna take our screwdriver and unscrew the battery tray. Next, we want to take off this blue strap from the motherboard, so carefully pull it out. And we want to separate the motherboard from the red plastic. So take your screwdriver or something thin and pull that wire through that black plastic and that's gonna allow you to separate the two pieces. Let's work on this piece. So flip it over, take off the rubber piece and we're gonna use our little tweezer to take off each plastic buttons. We're next gonna use the supplied replacement buttons. I love how all of them have the same color and we're gonna take each one and place them correspondingly into the holes. Notice how these buttons are nicely placed. Once all the buttons are nicely placed, take back your rubber piece and firmly press it down so that it's nice and flush. We're gonna do the same for the D-pad as well. So once again, take off the rubber, take off your existing piece, and replace the D-pad with the one that's provided. Do not forget to replace the PS button as well. Let's work on the touchpad. Take that off and just nip that little plastic off and you'll find a little green motherboard inside. All you need to do is replace that plastic with the one that's provided and essentially it's the two little same plastics, you just wanna replace it. I think it may have a little bit of color, but I don't know. And just like that, place back the touchpad back where it belongs. 
Let's now focus on this piece. We're gonna first snap off the analog sticks, so simply pull them off. We're also gonna focus on these bumper buttons as well, so these are your R1, R2, as well as your L1, L2. The L2 and the R2 are a bit tricky to remove, you need a bit of a wiggly motion. It was a bit tricky for me, and I think it will also be a bit tricky for you, so you can trust me on that. But I trust it, you'll get there. Once you remove them, notice these little rubber. These assist with the clicks, so don't throw them away. We're gonna replace these buttons with the ones provided. Let's take a look at the RGB light itself. So it's a pretty looking golden glossy paper, which is gonna be the light. Have a close look at the dashed white lines on the RGB light. We're gonna perform a sharp fold. So completely fold that over perpendicular to the surface of the RGB light and make sure they're pretty nice and sharp. Let's now take off the motherboard from this black plastic to have some room. You won't be able to take it off completely because of the vibration motors, but you just want to have a little bit of room to pass in the RGB light. Let's now insert the RGB light through the controller. So first take the largest flap that you folded and pass that through the controller and insert it so that it comes out from the other side. Don't pull that right now. We're first going to take the bumper portions and we're gonna pass the bumper areas through that bumper plastic area. And we've got two bumpers, so you've got the two corners. So just gently pass them through the controller and from the other side, we will then start to pull. Make sure you don't wanna pull one flap before inserting all the three flaps. Once the RGB light is properly hooked on at the back, it's now time to firmly press against all areas of the RGB light so that it sticks firmly to the controller. Let's now place back the motherboard wherever it belongs and let's now focus on the rubbers. So place these rubber, I don't know what you call them, just place them back where they were and we are gonna be ready to replace our buttons, the bumper buttons as well as the little trigger buttons. So guys, I snapped the little plastic off the trigger button, but honestly it doesn't matter because you can still stick that in place and the trigger will work just fine. That little thing just adds some added support. I don't think that little bit is necessary. These circles of your RGB light have double-sided tape attached at the back. So simply take those off and you can stick it in place where the analog sticks are gonna sit. These basically light up your analog sticks and they're gonna make it look as if the lights are coming from the analog sticks, which is pretty cool. Now replace these thumbsticks and rotate them to see if they move freely. Let's now attach the cover with the RGB system. So you see this blue wire? This needs to be really straight because it has to pass through that hole. And the key is to ensure this blue wire is nice and straight because only then will it be able to go through that hole. Take your tweezer or your long nails to simply pull it off whenever you see it. Once you manage to pull it off all the way, you can take back your tweezer and simply slot it through that white pocket or white hole, whatever you want to call it. Just do your best to make that fitting as nice and tight as possible. Let's now screw the battery tray back in place on the motherboard and this not only screws the battery tray but also sticks the three layers together. And after that, let's move on to the bottom cover. 
we will replace the little triangular motherboard that's been provided and we also have a double layered black wire. So start by taking the black wire and what we will do is we're gonna stick that wire through that hatch. You can again open it up and once it's nice and firmly stuck, close that latch so that it does not move or does not pop open. Dissembling this uh, charge indicator light section is fairly easy. You can just take them all off and what we're gonna do next is we're gonna replace the motherboard that's been provided with the existing one. Once you replace that triangular motherboard, let's now assemble these pieces back in place. Now have a little attention to how we stick these wires. Notice this little RGB light sticking out from the side. It is a bit hard to show because it's pretty small, but you can use your tweezer to kind of open it up and kind of pull it up. It has a small pocket that's gonna allow you to insert the thinner of the two black wires through that hatch. It has a hatch, so you just have to close it once it's nicely tight. Once that's stuck, take the larger of the black wires and simply put it in that white pocket. It's pretty visible, it's right there on the motherboard. Attach the thin wire to the motherboard and attach the other wire to the battery wire. And as soon as you do that, you'll see the red light pop up. That's an indication that your connections are nicely done. With that, gather up all the wires and you wanna close the PS4 system. And with that, you are done with the setup. All you have to do is to screw back the bottom and with that, you are done with this DIY project. Let's see how we can change the colors on your PS4 controller. Start by hitting the PS button to turn it on and all the lights should blink up. I currently have these three to be off and I'll talk about that in a minute. Hold your L1 and the cross button simultaneously for 5 seconds to enter the color changing mode. You can see that the D-pad starts to blink. You want to hit the right key to change the color. You can either have a solid color like this or even enter a certain mode. For example, this is the lightning mode. You can hit the right key again to turn it off completely. Once you have the desired color, hold your L1 and the cross button only once to change the color from that D-pad to the analog sticks. Similarly, you can change the color for the analog sticks as well and just repeat the process for all the functionalities. I absolutely love how amazing it looks and how easy it is to change the colors. However, I do want to point out that you cannot change the level of brightness of this RGB light kit. So that could be a bit of a con, especially when you're playing too much in the dark. That happened to me, so I had to turn off the analog sticks light. I think these two lights on the analog sticks are pretty bright and I normally turn them off because my eyes do feel fatigue over time. But hey, having RGB lights installed on your PS4 is definitely something that'll stand out from the crowd. I bet my friends are gonna look at it and they're gonna be like, whoa. Once you're happy with the settings, hold the L1 and the cross button simultaneously for three seconds to get out of the color changing mode. You can see this particular mode, it's constantly changing lights. I absolutely love it. I normally put this mode for both the triggers because I think it looks really nice. Time for the moment of truth. Should you invest in this RGB light kit or should you rather not? The answer is there is a learning curve to this DIY. So you do need that basic skills to open up the controller and play around with it. That does not mean that it is a difficult task. All you need to do is carefully follow the steps because they are pretty straightforward. It looks intimidating, but it is not. So if you are also interested to get these RGB light kits, 
The product links will be in the description box and also use this code to get a 10% off your final purchase, not only on the RGB lights, but on any product at extremerate.com. If you use my code on your purchase, I'll also get a small commission, which will assist with the growth of this channel. So that pretty much wraps up my video. If there are any other products that you want me to unbox or any other things that you want to see on my channel, be sure to leave your thoughts in the comment sections below. Until then, I'll see you guys next time and happy gaming!